welcome back to my kitchen. Here's Miss Tony again with not being able to meet you and missing you like crazy. But our last couple of classes would have been really fun, so we want to do an abbreviated version of that. We talked about knife skills, and if you're like me, I think to myself, you know, I like to cook, but I'm not always comfortable with using knives, you know, uh, and I want to kind of explore the different types of knives and really one or two knives that you need in your kitchen or with your um, kitchen or your folks kitchen uh, and why. So we have a, we have a six inch, I call it a paring knife, really easy to use, safe handle. You want a handle that's going to be able to fit your hand. You know, the young girls um, might have smaller hands than they have um, for the guys, but you want something that's going to fit your hand, that's going to feel comfortable. Um, the blade should be, you know, anywhere from four inches to six inches, and you're going to use it to pair or to cut. Uh, and, you know, if you walk with me, I'm going to use this real quick just for my apple so that you can see how this works. And when you say pairing, it is. A lot of chefs use it to pair or to peel. Easy enough. My suggestion is to have something like this, a pairing knife, in your kitchen or at your home. A lot of people like to have three knives. My favorite is a pairing knife. And then what they call a chef's knife. A chef's knife, when you show two different types, you have the one that has a wooden handle, steel enforced. See how it goes, and the steel kind of goes through the, the knife itself. Or a heat resistant plastic. Again, you want to have something that's going to be able to be comfortable in your hand. Most people like to use this, and they call it a utility knife, chef's knife, because 90% of our chefs like to use this all the time. Eight inches comfortable, it doesn't hurt. Um, when you have it, uh, you're gonna be able to use it for cutting, slicing, dicing. Uh, you have it so that you can easily use for all different types of produce, cooking with meat, so an eight inch knife. Now, some people like the bigger handles, I do. But don't be afraid to be able to experiment and ask your folks or your aides or the people that you work with um, what, what feels good in their hand. Because if you're spending a lot of time with this knife, you want it to be comfortable. That's the most important thing. You know, when you're working in a kitchen like I do or like my chef does, and you're working for hours and hours, in fact, Chef Al Alvaro, what knife are you using right now? You're using your eight inch, and so thank you. And so when you have that knife, that is my go-to knife. Now the last one that you wanna have, and I think almost every kitchen has one, is a serrated knife. Now this one has a really nice grip. Serrated knife or a bread knife. This one, just a comparison, way too long, dulls too it's serrated but it's not serrated enough in my estimation if you look at the bottom they have little grooves this one you could pick up at any Walmart uh, Kohl's uh, you know restaurant depot and those types of and it got it's really nice and you can go back and forth so it's a knife that you could use to saw and cook um, or use rather for cooked bread, even right out of the oven because the serrated edge, it's safe enough to cut through it, um, but it won't tear it. And that's with the serrated knife. So again, a paring knife, a utility knife, six inch, eight inch, and a serrated knife. That's all you need. This is all you need to feel comfortable in. And I think if you have these three knives uh, and keeping them sharp, Nobody ever cuts themselves on a sharp knife, just remember that. You only cut yourself on a dull knife. 
Um, and if you're safe, you'll never cut yourself at all. So that's my knife 101. Uh, we're getting into the holidays. And if you're all, I'm just thinking to myself, I don't have the time to cook, but I like to eat and I like to entertain, even if it's two or four people or in your group home or with your family. So we put together kind of a appetizer start. Easy enough. These I actually purchased. And I want you to know that even the best cooks will from time to time, if they're short on time or energy, or they just come out with, they just don't have a creative idea, they'll be able to come up with some ideas and buy them in the frozen food. So these are potato pancakes. Really fun, top them with sour cream. Then you have a vegetarian egg roll. Again, a wonderful way to be able to have appetizers. Spada popita, filled with spinach and feta for those vegetarians, and you know who you guys are, or gals. Corn fritters, really nice to be able to just pop these in. And then my favorite, spinach artichoke dip. I'm not sure if we had that at the class, but it's worth repeating. A spinach artichoke dip end results are cream cheese, artichokes, spinach, a little bit of tiny red chilies. So you don't even have to add that red red chili flakes, a little olive oil, and artichoke hearts. All easy to purchase at the store, and all you do is mix them and squish them together and warm them up in the microwave or the oven. I'm going to tell you very very easy to make and really yummy with your appetizers you need to have some type of dipping sauce again don't have to create it don't have to make it it could be store-bought it could be something that you have um, right on the shelves or at your home really nice teriyaki glaze goes really great with your egg rolls and your potato pancakes buffalo sauce you can buy this by the small jar or if you like tomatillo. Goes great with the hush puppies. Goes really great with your um, uh, potato pancakes also. Then of course, a fig glaze or a balsamic glaze. And these are something you can pick up at Sprouts or Jimbo, or Albertsons. And then you wanna be able to just glaze that. And this is yummy on all of the above. So easy appetizers, real easy things that you can buy. Freezer ready, put them in your oven, pop them in a toaster oven, and ready to serve. Serve your spinach artichoke dip with pita or crackers or some gluten-free options. I also like to have carrot sticks, celery sticks, those types of things. But this is easy enough, and this to me, an appetizer or the beginning or a fresh start, wait and then it gives you an opportunity that you if you are making some dinner you have the time between from your appetizers through to your dinner so these are easy enough for you to be able to do at home easy to be able to do the chopping and dicing with your knives um, for this i would use all, only my utility knife or my chef's knife my eight inch Easy enough just to be able to crumble these things and pull them in a bowl, and you're ready to entertain. So, what day and what time do you want me over? You got my attention, so give me a call, and we're gonna do appetizers, maybe at the house or outside, and I'm hoping that sooner than later. Miss you guys, bye-bye.